Welcome back, guys, to the Cow Scouts. I'm Sean. I'm here with Jimmy. And this week, we've got special guests, newly signed Jacksonville Jaguar, YBC returner, Jamal Agnew. Jamal, what's the uh, first big purchase after you sign a deal like that? Is it a house? Is it a car? Is uh, it uh, extra j- the guac at Chipotle? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a house. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to rent in Jacksonville just because I want to buy a house closer to home in California. I don't want to get one in California. It's too damn expensive out there. Um, so I'm looking maybe like Vegas or Arizona somewhere. I don't know yet. Um, I'm being patient with it. it. It's really no rush. I mean, the markets are hot right now. So shit's going to come off the market. Shit's going to come on the market. So, you know, I'm just being patient with it. I really just want to get settled in Jacksonville first. Um, worry about that training and everything. And I'll worry about the rest of that later. No income tax in Florida. Oh, man, I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> Funny thing is, a lot of people don't realize, like, with Cali, like you said, I've talked to a lot of guys that are, like, free agents and stuff, and, like, last year, Jadavian Clowney told me the 49ers called him, and he's like, there ain't no way I'm going out there because the taxes. Nah. He's like, that's nah. crazy. Even just, like, living up there in, in the Bay Area is ridiculous. It's probably one of the most expensive places in America to live. It, it's crazy. It's just all that Silicon Valley hype and everything like that. So it's just expensive as hell. I got. A, I actually got a boy who plays for. He went to. He went to USD with me. He plays. Played for Niners. Was like undrafted, practice squad guy. And he's like, yeah, bro. Like I live in a. I live with a, one of my practice squad guys. We pay like three thousand something a month, and like we split it. Like bro, Jeez. like crazy shit like that. Like I couldn't do it. <laughs> no, I'm too cheap for that. I have, a, I have a boy. I, actually, Isaiah. We've talked about Isaiah before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that dude used to live in a hotel room for, like, his first, like, two years in Buffalo. He may still be in it. I don't know. I haven't <laughs> talked to him in a while. That's smart, though. But, One but, of them, well, like, extended stays. Yeah, he ended up working out a little partnership with the hotel where he does, like, little, like, promos and, like, advertisement for him, and they probably let him stay there for free or something. That's fine. But he's saving money, though. That's smart as hell. Yeah. Like, you know, he don't got to get furniture, like, none of that type of stuff. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, I know a lot of people that do something like, like Glover Quinn. He used to, like, he used to, he used to get, like, a little one-bedroom because he obviously has a big house in Houston because he played there for a while. But he would, like, get, like, a small one-bedroom. Like, every year he would just rent it out in Detroit. It'd be furnished and everything. He's like, yeah, like, I don't really need anything. Like, I got my house in, back home. So, like, and like shit, I was like, damn. I'm like, why am I spending freaking two bands a month on rent and buying all this furniture and shit? Like, so I'm I'm just trying to I'm trying to take my notes, do what he was doing a little bit. Uh, I mean, you got you got to take notes from the OGs. Sure. It's funny when we get stories like that, Sean, and then we think of when we had Wolf on here, and he was just he's like, yeah, I just rented this ten thousand square foot house in Baltimore. I'm here all by myself. Yeah. I'm like, you're crazy, man. Yeah, like, okay. need that. It's like so ridiculous. And it was haunted too, which was even funny. Oh yeah, that, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's a haunted house. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm a firm believer in like ghosts and like paranormal shit. So like, nah, I'm too paranoid for that shit, man. <laughs> and I used to watch the show Ghost Hunters growing up all the time. Yes, yes. And then Ghost Hunters, all that. I I work at a fireworks store up here, and one of the dudes from the TV show came into the store, and I was like, oh shit, that was like my first time meeting someone on TV. I was like, dude. We we had these fireworks called the ghost hunter shells. I was like, dude, you should get these. Yeah. They're sick. They're not haunted though, I swear. Not haunted. <laughs> hey, the first time I was really starstruck was uh you ever watch Storage Wars? Yes. Yes. The, uh, the dude Dave the Yeah. Oh, he, da- uh, oh my god. We had this like we had this like swap meet back home in San Diego and he would always have his own like little booth and like he would always be there but i seen him there the first time and i had just got into the show bro. i was like no way he's right here and i was like bro can you say it for me one time he was like you did not oh. ask him to say it oh my god <laughs> you even got him to say it that's great bro. that shit was so dope <laughs> that's funny it's so funny because you don't even have to watch that shit to know like i've never really watched it but i know yeah. the show and as soon as you said dave i knew yep yeah exactly <laughs> that's funny uh, like I mentioned, you had just signed a deal with Jacksonville. And so I'm interested to know what free agency is like, because we have this weird experience with players where they'll like try to give us a heads up where they're going to sign, you know, let us break the news or whatever. But a lot of times the team or the agent like knows the deal and they release it before the player even knows. So like, I'm curious, like how involved were you in the process? 
Uh, I mean, I was obviously very involved, but I mean, shoot, it was different just because that was the, my first time experience free agency just because I played with Detroit my whole four years. So I didn't really have an expectation going into it. I was low-key, like, anxious as hell. Like, I would, like, ask my agent all the time, like, bro, what's going on? Like, he would always, t- he would always fill me in, like, yeah, these teams are really interested, but, you know, we got to play hardball we gotta you know tell them we got a bunch of other teams and you know shit like that but I mean it was it wasn't stressful but I mean like I said I was just anxious as hell just because it was my first time and I really just wanted to know where I was gonna be and just so I can just focus on training and then moving like I hate moving moving is a fucking terrible process like I hate this shit but yeah I was really just like anxious as hell like I was just man, what they talking about? Like, man, what do what you think I'm going to be? Like, shit like that. But, I mean, it all worked out in the end. So, you know, I'm just grateful. Did you have a list of teams? Like, or you can't reveal, like, who you were talking to? Uh, I mean, I obviously – obviously, I wanted to stay in Detroit, to be honest. Um, just because, just I, like I said, I hate moving. But, I mean, they gave me my first opportunity. So, you know, obviously, I'm – I feel like I'm a pretty loyal person. Um but I mean, just it just didn't work out. So, um, you know, we had a lot of teams that were inter- interested in me, and you know, they kind of valued my skill set and everything. So, you know, we we kind of ran with it. But I wouldn't have minded staying in the NFC North just so I could play Detroit a couple times a year. Uh, that would have been pretty fun. And that's got to be a cool dynamic for sure. Yeah. Or, <laughs> what about what about Denver or Vegas? Interested? Any? Um. I think Denver a little bit, but um, I was kind of just like, <laughs> I was kind of just like, I don't know, because they got a really deep fan. He's, he's a cool, cool ass motherfucker, and he he's one of the best returners in the league too. So he's he's nice, he's nice for sure. And so I wanted to go somewhere where you know I'm trying to be the guy, you know what I'm saying? And the team <laughs> that really, a team that really had a lot of interest in me was Minnesota, and. You know, I wouldn't have mind, minded going going to Minnesota playing to try to couple times a year, but but Jacksonville was the honestly probably the perfect spot for me just because I got to link up with Coach Bevel again. Like you said, no no state income tax, and you know that's just just perfect. So, I mean, we'll we'll keep it real too. You're happy you went somewhere you get to be the guy. I'm happy you went somewhere you got paid. So, mm-hmm. no doubt, and that's that's I'm not gonna say that was my Biggest priority, obviously, you know, you want to get paid that that second contract. But, yeah, I think, honestly, Jacksonville was probably my best opportunity to get to play for somebody like Coach Meyer. You know, I met him when I went out there. He's dope as hell. He, we kind of just, like, chopped it up, talked about some of the guys he coached, like Percy Harvin, Chris Rainey, all them dudes he coached at Florida, all them, them teams he had at Florida and Ohio State. So he, he's, he's dope as hell. Even, like, the staff he put together – I I just I just, I think we're gonna do some crazy things this year. Um, you know, whatever we do with that that first pick, you know, he obviously he obviously came out in the media and said <laughs> that we lean in towards yeah, what, you know, whatever you do, we'll, whatever, we'll whatever you do, wink wink. But wink. whatever whatever happens happens. But no, nah, I think we're gonna do some do some things this year in Jacksonville. So, you know, I'm excited. Sean's I, actually got a bet on you guys. Yeah, I, I just remembered this. I, okay. I mentioned it on this podcast before. I had a big debate with one of my friends. It was with yeah, Darius Butler. Uh, yeah, Darius Butler and I talked about this, that I have a bet that the Jaguars will win nine games this year. I was like, okay. they're going to get trapped. That's almost like leaving trapped. Okay. And what, what they did in free agency, signed all you guys. With who they awesome. take with the first pick. <laughs> yeah, who they take with the first pick. Let's see. Well, I don't know, man. We'll see. So. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I think we're going to do some things this year, man. Um, I'm not going to put a number on it. Nothing like that, but you know, obviously the league is tough regardless who you got. But I think we do. I think what Coach Meyer is doing down there, the staff he put together, the people you know he's bringing in. I think we're gonna do some things this year. So you know, I'm, gonna just, I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> what, what you kind of lucked out with that 17th game too. I just yeah, I was gonna say, what was your reaction with the 17th game? Uh, I mean, obviously the benefit of it is you know an extra check, but. I mean, that's a 17 games, that's a lot on our bodies. You think about it, that's 18 weeks now. I honestly, my personally, I feel like if we're going to do 17 games, we should get two bye weeks. I mean, yeah. but that's just me. But 
I kind of like how they, you know, short, they shorten the preseason. I feel like the preseason should be one or two games tops. I don't even know about a third game. I mean, I know it gives, you know, people more opportunities, you know, undrafted guys, you know, people competing for spots in camp and stuff. And, you know, I respect that. But, shit, it's it's a tough game. Um, I mean, especially especially since we don't really have, like, OTAs anymore this year. And I think in, like, the future we're not really going to be doing – a lot of OTAs, what, what, you know, what I'm reading from PA and shit. So, I mean, we'll see. They're trying to take stuff off our bodies, but shit, 18 week season, that shit's long. I'm not going to lie. Cause you get to like week eight and you're like, damn, like we're going to have 10 more weeks. Like shit. Like, I mean, imagine if you have that week four by and now you got to play 13 more games. But that's how I was in Detroit. Every year I was in Detroit, we always had our bye week like the first six weeks. So then it's just like, fucking 10 straight weeks and like we don't get another buy like but i mean shit we can't do nothing about it now so <laughs> yeah that's gonna be interesting for sure yeah. backtracking a little bit to when you were talking about uh urban and like percy harvin you think you could play that percy harvin role play style i mean percy harvin was one of one i mean you can't really <laughs> you can't really uh compare yourself to percy harvin you know, I don't really try to compare myself to other players. You know, everybody's different and unique in their own ways. But I definitely think I, I bring, you know, similar attributes. And, you know, I think I could play, you know, a similar role to that. I feel like my skill set, you know, feeds into that. You know, I'm pretty good with the ball in my hands. I'm fast. I'm quick. I can catch. I can throw. I can do all that shit. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just excited to, you know, be able to put my skill set like fully on display. Like, like I said to the media a couple of weeks ago, like I was just getting started in, in Bevel's offense. Like that was my first time playing offense since high school. And like high school, I didn't even like play offense. Like I just, I was running back. They tell me to play and you know, I get the handoff. Like we ran the wing tee. So it's not really play calls not or anything. There. That's what I'm saying. It's not really much with that. So it's just, I really got to dive into like a playbook formations concepts and all that so you now I'm so excited to just be able to just go out there and play this year and not not be thinking about oh what do I got right here what I got right here you know what I'm saying yeah. just because that was my first year really actually learning and shit but just the process of all that was was fun as hell to be honest I thought it was gonna be harder than it really was was the swap to cor- from corner to receiver was that a your call or was that some of the coaches kind of said hey you know we think this might be good for you it was it was a little bit of both. I mean, Detroit used to use me on offense sporadically, you know, here and there. And like I would always tell them like I could play offense. Like like they see they would see in practice like I can catch, I can beat people on routes, like I can do all that shit. Like obviously running by people because I'm fast. And I always be like, if y'all want me to just like stay here, like I can do it. Like <laughs> and obviously I want to because I, I want the ball in my hands, but it was it was kind of mutual and they were just like they actually wanted to do it. Um what year was that? They wanted to do it earlier than when they did a year a year before they actually did it. They they had talked about it in the spring. It was right when we signed Justin Coleman and he had got hurt in OTAs or before OTAs. He had like a peck or something. So they didn't switch me just because I was obviously the backup nickel because they had brought him in to start at nickel and I was the backup. So they're like, we can't really we can't really switch him because we don't know what's going to happen at that nickel position. So they kind of kept me. And then I think towards the end of that season is when they started like transitioning me. So, man, I wish they did it earlier though, to be honest. So. Cause um, my boy B Lang, Brendan Langley played for Denver, signed with Seattle for a playoff run. Yeah, corner, he was drafted corner, right? as a corner and then he yeah. swapped a receiver too. Yeah. But I, I think that was more of a, his call thing. And he did it in the preseason one year or the, in the off season. And then in the preseason, he just never really got a shot on offense. He maybe got, like, two catches the whole preseason. And I'm like, man, you guys aren't even giving him a shot to show what he can do. Like, because, you know, yeah. he was fast. He said he used to play receiver, too. So he said he actually started as a receiver. I remember him. He came from a small corner. school, right? Yeah, Lamar. FCS school. Yeah. yeah, FCS school. I remember him coming out. So I, I was curious if, like, because obviously you got a chance to showcase yourself on offense, which is cool. And, yeah. like, he really didn't. But that was – I like I said, I think that was more of a, just a his call thing. Yeah. And the coaches are kind of like, okay, well, we got all these other people. That was when we had Isaiah, too. Yeah. 
which pissed me off because we never got to do anything with him in the offense. We never gave him any of the sweeps, any of the screens. We just lined him out wide and tried to use him as like a legit receiver. Yeah. And then we ended up cutting him, and now he's shining in Buffalo. He scored awesome. seven touchdowns last year, I think. So. Yeah, and no, I feel like that's that's what the league is. It's really just like it's a lot of talented people, but it's just really just all opportunity. And how you use them. Like exactly that. how you use them, the right system, all that stuff. And it's just like a lot of talented guys I've seen come through like Detroit and like not get the opportunities to play and then go somewhere else and just start balling like and everybody's like, What the hell? Like, did y'all know he could ball? Like, yeah, we knew he could ball, like <laughs> Like y'all just didn't give him the opportunity, so it's just like that's 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 just like no, nah, I'm not saying only Detroit does that. Like that's just like a trend throughout the league. It's just like some people just don't fit certain systems, and it's just like once they find that perfect system, I wouldn't say perfect, but once they find a system that fits their skill set, and they get the opportunities, like they don't shine. It's just inevitable. I, mean, I think that was Stafford this year, personally. Oh, yeah. Always the guy that got the media crap and everything in Detroit. And, like, that dude Stafford's legit. But you know who else from Detroit I think is really, really good that doesn't get the recognition they would if they played, like, elsewhere? Who? Romeo. Oh, yeah. Romeo's a fucking dog, man. <laughs> Romeo was a dog. We knew he was a dog. It was a play. It was a play. His first year in Detroit, um, 2018, we played the Patriots. And they, it was like first quarter, they threw a swing pass to James White to the left side. And he, he came from the edge, chased his ass down, and like threw him like three yards. And we were like, Romeo's fucking different. <laughs> but he, he's honestly a freak. And he just got paid this year. I'm so happy for him because he, he honestly deserved that. And he literally just puts his head down. He just works. Like, he don't really talk much. I mean, when he does talk, he's funny as shit. He's cool ass dude like super chill but dude is just a dog like in every sense of the word what is more uh what is scarier catching a pass across the middle or catching a punt uh i would say catching a pass across the middle for sure yeah. just because when, when i'm back there catching punts I mean, most of the time, these dudes are booming them. So, like, I'm always having room. But, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that are really good at putting hang time on it and putting it on the sideline. But, you know, I really trust – see, it's really just like when you back there catching put, you got to trust, especially the corners that are out there jamming people up. You know, I always I always have my, my faith in them. Like, just, hey, bro, you block this gunner, like, I'm going to catch this thing and I'm gone. Like, that's all I need. Like, so I'm not really, like, worried about – getting hit back there. I mean, I'll get hit every now and then. Um, actually, Slay, Slay ass got me hit against the Niners a couple <laughs> years ago. We had uh, we had defense stay out there just because it was like fourth and short. And I kind of was being risky with it a little bit. He, he kind of boomed one. And I was like looking down at the gunner and Slay and then looking up. And I know Slay's tired of shit. He just came off like a long drive. I'm like, fuck, fuck. And it was, I think it was Mostert too. And you know, most oh, most of oh, yeah. dog, he was a dog on team back then. This is like 2018. And I as soon as I caught it, bah, he smacked me. He hit me pretty good. I had to pop up real quick. And I was like, damn, Slay. He was like, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nah, he, I knew Slay was tired though, because you know, Slay followed. He was following, I think, Goodwin that week. And you oh, know, God, Goodwin yeah. was running him running down the field. You know, Slay, Slay yeah. back and shit though. Slay can run with anybody. But no, I knew he was tired, bro, but I was like, damn, I just got smacked in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it easier to return punts or kicks? Uh punts for sure. Punts for sure. Just because it's I feel like punts is less athletes on the field because you know they gotta protect and shit. So like they have some tight ends out there, they'll have a fucking long snapper. And we don't block the long snapper or the punter. And you know, they usually have bigger linebackers just because Pump protection is so important. Pump protection is like one of the most important aspects of special teams. I feel like pump protection is probably what coordinators focus on the most in any type of like special team practice or anything, just because that shit, if you get a pump block, that shit can flip the whole momentum of the yeah. game, like even more than like a getting scored on, I feel like. <laughs> so I feel like pump protection is so important. So that's why they get guys that can trust out there. And it's usually the bigger guys who could be stout in the interior, 
you know, blocking and everything. So, but that kick return shit different, especially with the new rules and, you know, they got all the fast dudes that can hit and the, the dudes that don't care about their bodies. Like, <laughs> man, I didn't got hit so many times. Like, and I get up and just like, man, I don't want to do this shit no more. <laughs> nah, but my rookie year, my rookie year, um, our, we were, we were really bad on kick return. We, I don't know. I don't know if it was a scheme thing or just guys weren't, you know, bought in or just weren't, didn't really like the scheme, but like I would, I learned early, early on because I, I never really returned kicks. In high school, I returned kicks my senior year. See, I only, I only returned kicks and punts my senior year in high school and then my senior year in college. In my senior year in college, I didn't even return kicks. I just did punts. So, like, my first time in the league, my first year in the league was really, like, my first time returning kicks. And I learned so fast that you got to just hit that shit. You can't be indecisive at all because I was getting blasted left and right that year and I was just like coach I don't know what you want me to do like I'm I can't make everybody miss like and he was just like it was our assistant special team coach at the time he was like bro if that shit's too deep take a knee and I was like say no more because I'm not taking no more of these motherfucking hits and but it was it was just we weren't I think my stats were like 11 for like 190 that year I, I didn't I didn't return anything past like week six like <laughs> I was taking knees I was letting them bitches bounce in the end zone but I mean, shit, last year I had my best year kick return. You know, I had I had Leon Washington helping me these last couple of years. And he he's, I think, tied with Cordero with the most kick return touchdowns in NFL history. So just having him in my corner these last couple of years helped me so much just grow as a returner. Uh, I can't even – I can't even explain how much he helped me just because – just giving me that confidence, just being patient just because – it, it's been tough just, like, since my rookie year, you know, getting all pro. You know, people don't kick to me the same. They try to kick it towards the sideline. They try to kick it out of bounds. They try to do these, like, crazy sky kicks, these rugby-style kicks, and it's just, like, that shit's so frustrating because I just want to – I want to make plays. Like, that's what I'm – therefore, that's what I get paid to do is just make plays. But it's just, like, dudes are doing so many, like, crazy things to to limit that, and it's just, like, so frustrating sometimes. <laughs> And, like, yeah. a lot of times early on in my career, I would just get impatient and try to make shit happen. And and that's when, like, the muffs would happen and stuff like that, trying to force things. And just, like, having Leon these last couple of years just to lean on for, like, advice. And he would always tell me, like, Ag, just be patient. Like, the opportunity is going to come. And, you know, he would, like, calm me down a little bit because, you know, I'm always back there like, damn, like, Lee, like, they not even kicking it to me. Like, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get right. Like, he's like, Ag, it's going to come, bro. Just like, just be patient. Like, the opportunity's going to come. And when it does come, you can't, you can't let it go. Like, and man, I, I can't. I, I remember talking after some games and you were just like, bro, these dudes won't kick to me. Bro, it's so <laughs> annoying, man. I'm telling you. So like, what happens on the sideline? You're about to house this punt. And you get tackled by the punter. What happens? Oh man, I don't even want to go to sideline. Just go hide. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to just go back into the locker room. I let that happen. I let that happen a couple times this year. Um, man, Tennessee, I could have scored. I let I let Goskowski tackle me. I don't know why I let them tackle me because I really thought somebody was chasing me, but he wasn't as close as I thought he was. But I just felt him, and I kind of just like ran right into Goskowski. I let him tackle. <laughs> I really should have been gone, but. I let Mason Crosby, he kind of, he had a pretty good angle, but, and I had somebody chasing me, but I, I can't get tackled by the kicker. But, you know, there's it's some kickers out there that like to hit. I'm not going to lie. Um, Give us some That name. Australian dude in, um, in uh, Philly, the little redheaded dude, uh, oh. some, Cameron Johnston. Cameron Johnston. He uh, played in Philly. 2019, I had a punt return. I thought I was gone. I shot up the middle, and I made a cut. And I just seen me and him, and I was like, oh, I'm about to do something dirty to him. Like, I'm about to, I'm about to go crazy on him. And he came up. I didn't think he was going to come up and try to hit me because I, I was, was low-key trying to set him up. And then he kind of just ran straight at me, just, like, bear-hugged me. But he, like, put – he put his whole, like, body weight on me. I was like, damn. Like, then he got up started talking shit. I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's I, it was a pretty he's good bad. return, but like he, like he, he kind of stuck me. I'm not gonna lie. Like, <laughs> so 
so he got up. He was talking shit with his little accent. I'm like, I don't even know what you say right now, but <laughs> <laughs> nah, that shit was funny though. Sean, you remember back when we had Trendon Holiday against the Colts? Oh yeah. And Pat back if he yeah. killed this dude. Yeah. I see. I remember oh, yeah. that. I oh, follow that Pat so bad. on a, I follow him on Twitter. I think he posted that like a like a year ago or something. I I never seen that until he. Oh posted man, it. Like, that that's you know. probably the worst I've seen. It was on the sideline, right? Yeah, right on the yeah, sideline. Yeah, he he destroyed him. Like we're well, we're not just gonna push him out or anything. You're hit stick in his ass. And yeah. Trenton Holiday's like this big too, so he yeah. went flying. <laughs> It was that, and then remember when A.B. kicked the Browns punter in the face? Yeah, Sean, that was funny. kicked him in the face? Yeah, well, that, I mean, Sean Taylor also killed the punter, but, yeah. Oh, man, in the Pro that Bowl? Was, yeah, the yeah Pro that Bowl. was <laughs> legendary clip, yeah. legendary. <laughs> no, but oh, it's crazy, man. though, because cause punters are getting so much better now, and they're, like, learning, like, these new kicks. Like, they got these, like, knuckle balls that they hit in the air. And they don't do them as often just because they don't get a lot of distance on them. Right. Like, you kick like a 30-yard punt, you know, coaches on your ass. But, like, they kick these balls where they just look like freaking knuckle balls coming out the air. Like, they don't move. They, like, freaking move side to side. Like, shit's weird. But punters are getting so much better at just, like, putting shit on the sidelines. Like, Hecker. Like, Hecker's so good at that shit. Yeah. Jack Fox. I so love that dude, that. Johnny Hecker. Yeah, no. Nah, punters are just getting so much better. So, it's just, like it's so much harder to scheme against them. So I know like you really get like one or two opportunities to return or punt a game. And that's pretty much it. So it's just like, you can't let those opportunities go by because they don't come, they don't come in bunches for sure. Better, better returner all time. Joshua Cribs or Devin Hester? Hester for sure. Yeah. Cribs is a dog though. Cribs was a dog. I don't know that. I I feel like Hester. Hester was Hester was the top. I'm, I'm curious to see if some of these records get broken with this extra game on the season, man. Yeah, facts. I mean, you 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 got what, Jamal? You got probably it's got to be four or five punt returns. I got already. five, four five. punt returns, one kick. I okay, was, so I got yeah. one one punt kick call back. I really should have like fucking eight or nine in my career, but I just well, if you didn't let Gostowski kick, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then sometimes I I make the wrong cut, like yeah. man, like. That shit's funny. You see it on film, you're like, damn, like that should have been a touchdown. Like somebody missed a block, like one block away. Like last year I had like three or four returns that were like one block away. And it was just like, oh, like, come on, man. But I mean, like I said, you just can't let those opportunities slip, whether it's, and it's not even really people missing block. Like I got to make people miss too. So it's just like, it's not all on. Yeah, it, it's everyone. Blocking, it's not all on, you know what I'm saying? It's It's everybody out there, but. I mean, that shit's fun, though, still. You you taking all the returns in Jacksonville this year? Is that something you guys talked about yet? Uh, I mean, I'm expecting to, but obviously, you know, got to come in and compete. I mean, you know, nothing's just given. You know, I got to earn that earn that spot. But, you know, I'm expecting to. Um, you know, I'm I'm always ready to uh, return kicks. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just what I do. So, you know, I'm ready to come in there and compete. Has uh, Bethel talked about how he's going to use you in the offense yet? Uh, I mean, he said, he, you know, I'm being a slot, but I just just from last year, you know, I learned every position. I learned the X, I learned the Z, so you know, I could I could be used anywhere. But I told him I could play in the backfield. I could do all that. Bevel knows I can throw the ball. He used to let me run wildcat. Ooh. Like we played uh <laughs> we played the Cardinals last year, and I was Kyler Murray <laughs> for the scout teams. And I was just running the wildcat. That, that, I, Isaiah I, was Kyler Murray for yeah. Buffalo too. That's I was funny. killing. I was killing him with that read option. I was throwing darts. <laughs> the hilarious thing about that is Isaiah was the scout team Kyler Murray and then he threw a touchdown that week they actually let him throw a little pass back to Josh Allen for a touchdown for real it, yeah in that game it was fun I threw one to uh staff uh Thanksgiving day when we played um we played the I think it was Thanksgiving yeah we played the Texans on Thanksgiving he dropped it though but he <laughs> he, he kind of got smacked though <laughs> Well, what I'm hearing here is that the Jaguars need to take Jamar Chase number one, have you run quarterback, and there, there's the Ooh, option. <laughs> hell yeah, run that, run that read option. I love it. Urban <laughs> Meyer, Meyer led that read option. Oh, uh, that cool team up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole, like, using you on offense thing, when you were in free agency, is that something that you were paying attention to? Like, is this team 
going to use me on offense more and not just special teams or, yeah. cause that was one thing I wondered is I was like, I hope he goes to a team that says that they're going to use him more than just returning kicks. Yeah. Like, is that something that you were paying attention to with all these teams? Yeah, that's definitely something that, that I was factoring into, you know, where I, where I signed just out. Cause I feel like I can make an impact on offense. Um, you know, like I said, I was just getting started, like learning, you know, different concepts and just, just terminology on offense and everything, just cause playing defense is so much, I don't, I wouldn't say it's so much easier, but just like the playbook is so much easier to learn than playing offense. So it's just like, especially with no off season last year, like I didn't really get OTAs. I didn't get a lot of reps to, you know, for that transition. Like, I feel like if I had OTAs, you know, practicing on the field, getting reps and stuff would have helped my transition a lot more, but we didn't have any of that. So, you know, I was really just learning everything on my own. Um, obviously we had like the Zoom meetings and stuff, but that's only like a couple hours a day with with the coaching staff and stuff. So I didn't really get a lot of time to just like really digest everything. So I was really just teaching myself everything. I would just watch guys like Marvin, Kenny, Danny, and then we had got Sanu, Later in the season, I would just watch what they do on the field and just, like, emulate it, try to see what I could throw into my game. And, like, you know, I was just – you know, I was just out there freestyling low-key. Then, like, this year I really get to learn stuff. I really get to get, like, great co- – like, we had a really good receiver coach in Detroit. Co- he's in he's down in Houston now. And, you know, I almost signed out there just because he was out there. But, Damn. you know, I definitely – I definitely was factoring in the fact that – you know, I really wanted to get opportunities on offense to to show what I can do. And, you know, just Jacksonville was the best the best opportunity for me just because, you know, I, I don't have to learn a whole new offense. You know, I can just pick up where I left off with Bevel. And I know how he I know how he likes to use me. He knows my skill set and everything. So, you know, it just worked out perfectly for me. And, you know, just get like I said, just to play for Coach Meyer, like legendary, legendary coach and you know, obviously we're going to go. Whatever they do with that pick. number one whatever pick. They do with that, yeah, whatever pick. we do with that number one pick. So <laughs> it, it, it's just a great opportunity for me. Well, what was your reaction when they got Marv too? Oh, I was hyped. I was, I was actually taking a nap. And somebody had, like, texted me and was like, Marv? Like, exclamation point, question mark. I was like, huh? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And I went on Twitter and I seen that we signed Marv and I was hyped. That should, that should going to be dope just – just because I, I, I've learned from him these last couple of years, um, just being in the receiver receiver room with him and just being on the same team with him, just seeing how he works. Uh, you know, he just comes in, he works every day. You know, he don't complain. He don't do none of that. He just comes in and works and just just the role model he is. Like, he's a great dude. He's a great mentor, but he's a he's a dope-ass father. Like, he's got five beautiful kids, like, and he takes care of them all. Like, he hypes – he's their biggest hype man, like, he he's just a dope ass person. Like, if you ever got the chance to like chop it up with Marv, like he's gonna show hella love. Like he's just a real cool dude. It's, and and just to be able to play with him again, just learn from him again, is is dope. Jags are gonna be good, man. They're gonna be good this year. Yeah, I, I, still I can't believe they some... let both Kenny and Marv go. It's crazy to me. We're gonna make some noise. I know, yeah. I I was a little confused when they didn't resign Kenny, but my my I mean, boy's a Lions fan, and he he's he's pretty pretty upset about it. Yeah, no, especially considering I just got him a autographed Kenny jersey last year, and now it's just up on his wall. <laughs> yeah, no, Kenny's a Kenny's a dog. He's gonna he gonna make some noise in New York. They're gonna love him out there. Yeah, I'm jealous. I wanted him badly in free agency on the Raiders, but yeah, no, you don't need him. Nope. <laughs> yeah, Fine. we don't yeah. need him. Yeah. I was a Ra- see. I was a Raider fan growing up. Like, I oh, jeez. Up- there we go. I grew up in California, though, like yeah. Southern California. But my my dad was a diehard Raider fan. Like, so I had no choice growing up. Yeah. But, I mean, it was like my mom's side of the family were Charger fans. My dad's side of the family were Raider fans. So I was a little bit of both, even though they were rivals. Like, because like LT was one of my favorite players ever. Yeah. But then also Charles Wilson was is one of my favorite players ever. So it's just like. But I really gravitated more towards the Raiders. Just kind of oh, here, represent my dad. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I found a few of these questions from the story that we put up yesterday. Figure we'll go through a couple of these really quick. Uh, Jago Fago says, have you found out if you'll have a major role in the Jaguars offense going forward? I feel like we kind of answered that. but mm-hmm. uh, 
I mean, I hope so. I mean, you know, I'm going to come in there. I'm going to compete. You know, we got some really good receivers out there right now. We got DJ. We got Lavishka. We got Marv. We got, you know, we signed Philip Dorsett, too. You know, we're fast. Guys like Colin Johnson. <laughs> All I hear we is got, fast. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We got a fast-ass team. So, you know, I'm going to come in there and, you know, bring – put my skill set on the table and, you know, come out there and compete. And, and that's what the league is. It's, it's all about competition and, you know, earning your spot. I apologize if I butcher anybody's name here, but we got Parth VJ 21 says, what's your favorite Lions memory? Favorite Lions memory. Um, let's see. My favorite Lions memory. It's going to have to be uh, – what – it's one of it's one of Prater's game winning kicks. You know, he had a he had oh, a, I love a, Prater. Oh yeah, man. No, Prater is a fucking he's a he's a man, but I think it was the one I'm gonna have to say the one in Chicago, I think it was twenty seventeen, my rookie year. He hit like a fifty six yarder in the wind to win the game. Like it was crazy. But it was windy as shit that day. We're like, damn. But we're like, damn, like we down. I think it was t- – actually, I think it was tied. And we're like, damn, we, like, we were trying to move the ball downfield. We didn't really get anywhere. And we're like, damn, we got to kick this shit from midfield. And this is my rookie year. I didn't really know, like, who – obviously, I knew who Prater was, but I didn't know his, like, resume then. Yeah. And they were like, but Prater got, like, the long – he got the longest field goal in NFL history. I was like, for real? I'm like, but yeah, we got Prater. He going to make this shit. He fucking <laughs> boomed that shit. <laughs> that shit if you need dope. a dude to hit a 50-yarder to win, I mean, it's him and Tucker. That's it. Yeah, no, nah, Prater got a fucking boot. Yeah, I'm happy for him. He's he's back in Arizona, out in Arizona now, so you know, he's gonna do some good things out there. I'll never forget when he hit the 64 yarder for us. It was it was yeah. crazy. That's the record, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, FMB underscore JB says, if you have the opportunity to come back to defense, would you do it? I would do it. I mean, you know, I've played defense my whole life. That's something I started with. Um, I mean, that's something I did throughout high school, college, and I just feel like it's just natural to me. So I would always I would always come back to defense, no hesitation, if I if I'm asked to. And and that's just one thing that I just I got in my toolbox. Like I can play offense, I can play defense, I, I go hard on special teams, you know, I can do all that stuff. So it's just it's just important to just be as versatile as you can and the more you can do, you know, the more value you valuable you are. Yep. So Red C Moore says who was your favorite teammate in Detroit? My favorite teammate, uh, probably Nino Quadre Diggs, just because yep. he always – he's the same person every day. He was always going to talk shit. He was always going to clown you. He was going to roast you. He was going to be your biggest hype man. He was going to be your biggest supporter. But it was just the consistency. Like, he was always the same person. But now I would say him, him, or, him or Slay, you know, Slay, Slay was Slay, so them two for sure. Slay, Slay's goofy as hell. I love yeah, it. Slay, Slay. Slay's a, he's a kid at heart, but like I'm the same way. So it's just like I, I just I just love seeing people like that. Slay comedian, that man funny as hell. Yeah, he's man, funny. these dudes put in some good questions. Finally, it's about time we guys sent in some good questions. <laughs> oh, here we go. The real Finch one four one four. Who was the best hooper you played with at USD? I know who that is. I went to college with him. <laughs> so is I'm he trying to, to get say, it? Say I'm you. Say, say him. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say uh, Anthony Lawrence. That's my dog. That that's who that is. But he was my quarterback at college. But gotcha. that's my that's my that's my splash bro right there. We used to we used to go crazy <laughs> in the intramurals. You know we used to we used to we used to wreck shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's an interesting one. You play Mortal Kombat? Uh, I, I used to. For some reason. This is kind of a real question, but Neil Arson says, which Mortal Kombat character do you use and which fatality is best? Uh, I know Neil, too. Uh, <laughs> I would say I like I like Scorpion. I was going to say I'm a Scorpion guy. Like Maybe Scorpion. Yeah. Scorpion. Get over here. <laughs> I, I used to, like, you know, I used to suck at the combos, though. I'm not going to lie. The, the, uh, I used to have I'm the, the dude best that start, sits like, there and hey, does one move, and you yeah. get pissed off at me, and I'm just going to keep doing that same move. No, nah, I used to have to, like, me and my homie used to play. I used to have to, bro, let me pause this. Let me look at the move list real quick. Like, <laughs> he knew all the moves. I'm just, like, pressing buttons. I'm doing the same moves, like you said. He knows all the moves. Not, I mean, I got to look at the move list for all that shit. 
So this this is one that we've actually talked about with some of our friends before. Uh, ben Armstrong, 39, says, why the hell is he so goaded in Madden? Because <laughs> you're hey, fast as shit know. in there. That's all you need. I didn't even know. I didn't even know I had that. Um, I, get, I have the little superstar development trait. And I didn't even know that until somebody, like, tagged me in Twitter on Twitter about that shit. And I was like, what are you talking about? And, like, I went out – because I don't really play Madden. I play, like, 2K and Call of Duty. And I, play, I, put, on, I put on Madden, and I, like, looked, and I was – it said I was a superstar, and I was like, shit, rightfully so. Like, I am. Like, <laughs> nah, but I didn't even know. But I think it's just because – I think it's because the returning – I think my returning is, like, over 90. So, I think I think if you get something, like, over 90, they give you, like, the superstar trait or something. Something, something like that. I don't, really, yeah. I don't really play it as much as I used to, but I know now it's all about the speed, too. So, as yeah, long as you got speed, true. you'll be uh-huh. crazy on there. Uh-huh. So, so, this is – the last one – we were talking about this before you joined up. Uh, Can't guard me. Zero three five says, could you imagine playing all three sides of the ball since you got drafted as a DB? At, at one time, like at in, one time. One oh day. yeah, I could. I, I definitely think I could do that. To be honest, oh. I mean, I mean, shoot, like I, last year it actually almost happened. Um, week one against Chicago, we had um, we had Trufon get hurt. And then Justin Coleman got hurt, so we had and we only went in the game with three corners. I mean, not three corners, five corners, I think. And two of them went down. the The two top corners went down, and shit, they they like looked at me like I was like, damn, like if y'all need me to go out there and play corner, like I'll play. Like I was literally one cramp away, like somebody getting a cramp, like I I was in there, like I was in there playing nickel again. And I mean, I was willing to do it too, because I mean, obviously it would make me that much more valuable. But, I mean, I, had, I hadn't practiced at it. None of, I got no reps. I, I knew the defense because it was the same defense, you know, for the last three years. But, you know, we kind of had some new things and stuff. So I was like, damn, I don't know none of the new calls, like none of that shit. Like, <laughs> but, I mean, like I went up to I went up to Matty P. I was like, you need me, I got you. Like, I'll go in there. But it never happened. So, you know, thankfully. See, that'd be crazy to stay out on the field to make the defensive stop. The defense runs off the field. You just stand there because you're going to take the punt. Yeah. You return the punt. Special teams runs off the field. You just stand there because you're going to be out there on offense. Yeah. The like, coach, can I get some water or something? Like yeah. anything? Imagine playing like 400 snaps in a game. Oh, my oh, God. God. That would be nuts. <laughs> that, would be, that would be nuts for sure. <laughs> you, remember, you remember two years ago, Sean, when Isaiah had to run out there and play corner in the last game of the year? For real? <laughs> I don't yeah. that, really? It was the last game of the year. And I, I don't remember if it was just injuries or if they sat guys out because, like I said, it was week 17. But, yeah, he actually got corner, cornerback snaps out there. It was crazy. That's kind of lit. <laughs> That's kind of lit. Like playing, like, uh, peewee ball all over That's again. That's what I'm saying. You played, you played every aspect of the game. Right. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Well, Jamal, is there anything you want to plug, man? We, I mean, obviously, we appreciate you coming on here. You've been on here for a while. Chopped it up. Anything you want people to check out or – Nah, man, just just if y'all watching this, stop using the AUG and Call of Duty, please. I'm I'm tired <laughs> of dying by it. <laughs> they got they got to nerf that thing soon, man. It's crazy. Man, that shit is crazy. People just sniping with it like cross the map. Just at yeah, least I hate dam- those guys. Man, range. Range. That shit's kind of like the growl, like when the growl was oh freaking P. That like. was all right, P. Growl. That was my, yeah, that was my favorite. That, that growl is like a paintball gun now. That shit's ass. You know, the last time Sean played it here was probably a month after the game came out, maybe, yeah. when people were using, like, the M4s and stuff. Yeah. I, I just yeah. couldn't – I couldn't get into it. I, I like the old CODs better. Yeah, Modern Warfare yeah. 2, all those ones. Modern Warfare 2, that's the yeah. goat right there. That's exactly. The goat. Yeah, now just – I just stick to Madden and 2K. I don't play as much as I used to, so. Yeah. See, that 2K pisses me off. That 2K is so fucking... Oh, it's hard terrible. To, it's, hard, it's so hard to shoot in this one. Oh, my God. It's broken. Yeah, yeah. That's not, man, it, I'm it's breaking broken. vital. I got flexible release on Hall of Flame, and I'm still breaking shit. Like, yeah. I'm tired yeah. of it. Like, It's literally broken. It's yeah. terrible. <laughs> you you catch Sean and I in that all-star team up. We'll be running around with Michael <laughs> Jordan and Kobe, and then we still can't hit shit. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'll play, like, just an exhibition game with somebody, and I still can't hit a jumper. It's just like... Over that shit, I'll play my career though, cause I hit I hit all them shots in my career. Put that on rookie. <laughs> yeah, I put it on rookie and everything. <laughs> <laughs> all 
Hey, Jamal, I really appreciate you coming on. You had something to say, Jimmy? I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, if Kevin Durant ever watches this for any reason, fix your 2K guy because I can't hit shit well, with him. Well, he's got to talk to Ronnie 2K. Hey, on him. You Two know, years you know, in a row. You know, We're talking this 2K and last you know, 2K. You're going to hurt his feelings saying that. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be on our page with a burner, not KD35. <laughs> KD30. No, he's not there. I don't think he's 35 anymore. Is he nine or something? Something, yeah. I don't even yeah. know. But I, no, I, I, seriously, I, I, like two years in a row, man. I'm like 0 for 10 with KD in the game. I can't. Yeah, that 2K is broken. 2K is broken. Who who was it the other night, Sean, when I quit out because of freaking Jokic? Jerry West. Jerry West is terrible. No, no, no. When Jokic was busting my ass. Oh, uh, you had LeBron and he blocked you with Jokic. Yeah. Yeah, and I was oh, like, man. yeah, yeah. He <laughs> quit out. This dude, <laughs> this dude blocked me in like the first quarter. So the rest of the game I set out my mission is I was going to embarrass this dude. Yeah. And it gets to like the fourth quarter, and I'm driving in wide open lane, and LeBron cocks back this crazy dunk. Jokic just fucking uh, swats it out of my hand. I quit the game. Uh, out. Yeah, straight so, up, the Joker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jamal, thank you for coming on, man. Uh, yeah. Make sure you guys follow me to, at two underscore six. Yes, sir. Yeah, check him out. my college number. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my friend. Having me, <laughs> yeah, appreciate y'all having me. Have fun. Yeah. No problem. Right, man. We'll, we'll run some war zone sometime. You can see me run around with my AUG and talk shit to me. So yeah, I got as long as you're on my team. Shit. <laughs> yeah, you'll you probably get killed by it a few times too, but it'll be all right. Nah, no doubt. Just quick scope. And you said you were nice with the quick scope. So oh yeah, yeah, run yeah. around, you, run yeah, around with that car ninety eight. Like two hundred, two hundred thirty does. I'm legit. <laughs> uh, all right, Jamal. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, man.